This Week in IT, Microsoft announces the deprecation of Windows Server Update Services in Server 2025. Intune gets MDM controls for Apple Intelligence. Entra Internet Access is now generally available, as is the replacement for the remote desktop client, which is now GA across all platforms. So stay tuned for all the details. Hello and welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I discuss everything connected to Windows, Azure and Microsoft 365. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask. About 42% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,800 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 7,900. So if you'd like to see this kind of weekly news update from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Probably as you already know, Windows Server 2025 is just around the corner. I expect it's likely that Microsoft will announce its availability around the time of Ignite, which should be in November this year. But Microsoft has been busy listing which features are going to be removed and deprecated from the new version of Windows Server. And this week they announced that, wait for it, Windows Server Update Services is being deprecated deprecated. Now, what does that mean exactly? Deprecation, uh, at least in the eyes of Microsoft, means essentially that they will not be adding any new features to the product. It will be supported going forward. They're still going to maintain it, but there's no development of this product going forwards. So that doesn't mean, at least at this point, that it's suddenly going to stop working. Microsoft has promised that they'll still be delivering updates through the channel to this feature. So you don't need to worry right this moment if you're using it for patching in your environment. But Microsoft is encouraging that organizations consider moving to another solution. Of course, they're suggesting that you should consider using Microsoft Intune, which is their MDM solution for the cloud, and moving all of your updates into a cloud-based solution. Now, there's been a big fuss, of course, uh, among system administrators about this news this week. Many sites rely on this technology to update their servers and endpoints. Some people have been saying that, well, okay, Intune is much more complicated to deploy, more difficult to manage, and that Windows Server Update Services has some specific features that allow it to be used in scenarios where, for instance, you might need to update servers or devices that aren't connected to the internet. It's really useful for that. So first of all, I'd say, well, Windows Server Update Services, I mean, it's clear that Microsoft hasn't really been investing in that technology for many years. So I wasn't expecting this to come right now, this announcement, but on the other hand, it doesn't really come as a big surprise. Is Intune more complicated to deploy and manage? You know, I would debate that. I'd love if you let me know what you think in the comments below about it, but I don't think that Intune is more complex to deploy or more difficult to maintain. At least the last time I looked at installing Windows Server Update Services, it's quite a complex process process that you have to go through, especially if you've got you know, several of these you know, services distributed around a, a, a geographical network and you know, over a very wide area. You know, I don't think that this thing is necessarily easy to install, maintain and deploy. So I'm not sure that it's really such a big leap to imagine that you might move over to a cloud service, especially in today's situation where you have many people working remotely from lots of different locations. Something like what Microsoft offers with this feature is really a product from the past. Not to say that it doesn't still have its uses today, but you know, if you have one of those specific scenarios that you need to address, then of course there are third party patching solutions that you could use instead. As far as I know, unless something has changed, 
changed Windows Server update service is also the updating technology that Configuration Manager uses. So it's interesting to see what will happen with that going forwards because I assume that at some point Microsoft will stop supporting Windows Server update services and then what is Configuration Manager going to use as its engine for providing OS and software updates. Um, you know, unless that's something that's already changed, I, but I don't believe so. Let me know in the comments below as well if you're using Configuration Manager and if you have any plans to move away from that technology. It's that time of year where Apple announces its new iPhone and other devices in the various lineups that it has. And we all know, of course, that the iPhone 16 has been recently announced and that there are a whole load of new features coming to iOS. 18 I believe it is called Apple Intelligence. Now Apple has been a little bit slow to the artificial intelligence uh, market. They've kind of been waiting to see what's going to happen. You know other companies obviously like ChatGPT, Google and Microsoft have been way ahead of them. But Apple is introducing a whole load of AI features which is dubbing Apple Intelligence as part of the iPhone 16 and other devices. But Apple Intelligence will also be available to the iPhone 15 Pro, I think, if I remember correctly, but uh, you know, a generation, uh, one generation back, if you like, of these legacy devices. So it's going to be pretty widely available. Now, Microsoft is enabling some MDM controls in Intune that are going to allow organizations to either completely disable access to Apple intelligence or at the very least control which ones can be used. And Microsoft says that these controls will allow organizations to manage Apple intelligence on both unmanaged and supervised devices. So I guess that's going to be welcome news to organizations as this update for iOS rolls out to existing devices and of course as people start to purchase new iPhones. Now this is an interesting one. Entra Internet Access is now generally available and it's a security service edge solution, if you like, which is designed to protect your organization against applications, cloud-based applications and general uh, unpleasantness, if you like, on the internet. Now, this service is going to integrate with existing features that are available as part of Entra ID, like conditional access and context-aware network security. And it's basically applying web filtering and domain-specific policies that allow you con to control what users are able to access on endpoints. Microsoft is saying that it will ensure network compliance, provide in-product reports, and that it will log real IP addresses. This is the first generation of this product, so I expect that it's not going to quite stack up to things that are already out there in the marketplace. What I'm really interested to see is how this is going to stack up against Zscaler Internet Access, which is probably one of the most popular solutions for this type of product. If you're using Zscaler Internet Access, please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you've had a look at Entra Internet Access, how you think it's likely to compare. If you're a long time Windows system administrator, you're likely familiar with the remote desktop client, that remote desktop protocol that we all love to hate, mainly because of the security vulnerabilities that it's challenged us with over the years. But Microsoft announced this week that the Windows app, which is eventually going to replace the remote desktop client, is now generally available across all platforms. Now, this is an app that unifies the ability to get remote access to all of your cloud PCs, regardless of which Microsoft technology they're based on. So whether that cloud PC is in Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, Microsoft DevBox, or it's a personal remote desktop hosted somewhere else, you will be able to get access to it using this app. And it doesn't matter which platform you're using to do that remote access, whether it's Mac, whether it's Windows, this app is now generally available across those platforms. Microsoft is saying that the new app supports multi-monitor setups, dynamic display resolutions, device redirection, and advanced security features like multi-factor authentication. 
They haven't listed whether it's supporting passwordless, but I guess if it doesn't right now, it will do at some point in the future. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the deprecation of Windows Server update services. Maybe you're already using an alternative. I'd love to know. Also about Entra internet access. What does your organization use? Is it using Zscaler or something else? Is what Microsoft is presenting with this product enough to make you think about using their option or is this really a non-starter at this point i'd love to know what you think if you found this video useful i'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps us to grow the channel i'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now about all of the copilot wave 2 announcements that microsoft made last week there's a whole load of really interesting stuff there but thank you for watching and i'll see you next time